Amanda Freed. I'm Leah Amico. I'm Soraya Flowers. I'm Lovey Jung. I'm Mike Candrea, head softball coach of the women's Olympic softball team. Welcome to Sports School. There's two keys to a good offensive player. One is their ability to swing the bat, but the second, and it's just as important, is their ability to run the bases. Today we're going to talk about base running, beginning at home plate, talking about running through the bag at first, making turns at first, and then we'd like to go to each base and talk about the different leads and the different responsibilities at each bag, at first base, at second base, and at third base. As you will see, they're all a little bit different, but it's very important that you understand that you don't have to be quick to be a good base runner. If you're smart and you know how to run bases properly, you can be a great asset to any team. When we hit a ground ball to an infielder and we're running straight through the bag, we want to make sure that we hit the front part of the bag. The other thing I like to have our runners do is as they hit the bag, I would like to see them glance to the right because if there's going to be any overthrows, it's usually going to be at this side of the field. This will allow that runner to make a reaction very quickly and advance on to second base. The third thing and probably the most important thing is we want to run hard through the bag. We want our runners not to try to chop their steps. We want to be nice and fluid and run through the bag 65 feet instead of running 60 feet. Another situation when running the bases from home to first is when we hit a ball to the outfield. In that situation, we're going to run to a point and make a turn at first base. And here's the key right here. She's going to go directly from home plate toward me. She's not going to run up the line and make a question mark. She's going to run straight toward me, drop her left shoulder, make a good aggressive turn, touching the inside part of the bag with either her left or right foot, and then get off the bag as far as she can until she has to get back. The one thing we want to watch her do as she gets out is she lowers her center of gravity so that it allows her to transfer her weight back to first base. When we hit a ball to left field or center field, we always want to make sure that we make a turn and we open up to that position in the outfield. So Leah's going to run to a point. She's going to be thinking two out of the box and notice how she opens up to left field and then plants and gets back. The one thing that you notice here, she can get out a little farther when she hits the ball to left field or center field. Now, when we hit a ball to right field, you're going to see a little different technique. In this case, Lovey's going to kind of shorten her turn and open up toward right field and then plant and get back. Plant and get back, work in the outside part of the bag. Two distinctly different ways on balls hit from left field or center field and a ball hit to right field. Let's review our techniques of base running from home plate to first base. Remember there's two types of turns that you're going to take. The first is on a ball hit to an infielder we have to run through the bag. The second is any ball that goes to the outfield we're going to take our turn. Remember the most important thing once you get out of the box is on about your second or third step take a peek see where the ball is, and then now you determine what's the best technique for you. If an infielder catches it, we're going to run through the bag. Again, remember, we're going to touch the inside or the front of the bag, glance to the right as we hit the bag in case there's an overthrow, and continue to run down the line. Now, if we hit a ball that goes past the infielder to the outfield, we want to make sure that we run a direct route from the batter's box to a point. We're going to lower our inside shoulder, now we're going to think two out of the box. We're going to make a good sharp turn using either our left foot or right foot on the inside corner of the bag and then get off as far as we can. Make sure we lower our center of gravity and then we want to plant and get back working the outside part of the bag. Remember, left field or center field, we open up toward left and center. But if we're going to right field, the ball's hit the right field, we're going to have to shorten our lead and open up to right so that we can get back safely. OK, 
Okay, we arrived at first base, so now we're going to talk about leads at first. There's two types of leads that we're going to take. The one will be a lead that's a one-way lead. We know that we're stealing or there's a hit and run on, and we know we're going to second base. The second one, and probably the most important one, is a two-way lead. This is a lead that you don't know what's going to happen. You need to be able to go to second base, or you need to be able to get back to first if you need to. So there's two techniques that we're going to show you. The first one is a technique where you use the outside part of the bag and you're more in a rocker start. Taraya uses a rocker. She's going to be in a good sprinter's position with her right arm forward and her left leg forward. She wants to make sure that she loads onto that left leg so that she's not leaning back. Okay, so she wants to get off as quick as she can and then she's going to go ahead and take a two-way lead where she's going to get off, bounce, bounce, square up. Now she can either get back to the bag or she can go to second. The key to this lead, though, is timing, because she has to time herself. She wants to get off her left foot right as the ball's release. She's leaving the bag. The second type of lead will be leading off in front. And what Amanda does is she starts in the front of the bag, and then from there she will continue to do what we're talking about, and she's going to get off the bag, step, hop, hop. She squares up to the plate, and she's able to move either back to the bag or on the second base. Now, the one thing about getting back of the bag is we always want to use the outside part of the bag. So if Taraya will get off for me and then watch her come back to the bag, if there's a throw at first base, she's going to get back. She's going to peel back so that now if there is a tag, they have to reach for it. Okay? Good base runners always keep their eyes on the ball. A very simple thing, but it's very important. You never, ever, as a base runner, not know where the ball is. So those are two leads that you can work with. One is with your right foot in front of the bag. The other was with your right foot behind the bag. Both leads, we use a step bounce bounce, square up so that we can go either way. And then when we get back, we want to use the outside part of the bag to peel back. Leads at second base, you have a little more time and you can be a little more aggressive. Unlike first base, we wanted to get off and we want to take a step, bounce, bounce. Well, here, we want to try to do a couple of things. Number one, if we know we're in a short game situation and we're just trying to get from second base to third base, then we want to take a direct route uh, from second base to third, and we have to get into our lead as quickly as possible. But if we know that we have a chance of scoring, the one thing we like to do is get a little bit of depth so that we can make a good turn when we get to third base to set ourselves up to score at home plate. It's the basic, same concept as at first base. You can lead off with your feet in front of the bag, or you can actually lead off with your feet behind the bag, like Taraya did at first base. But the difference here is she's going to take two steps and then get into her bounce so that she's able to move both ways, either to third base or back to second. One, two, bounce, bounce, OK? OK, and then that would be a lead directly toward third base. Now, if we know that we can score. We've got a right-handed hitter up. We know that it could be a base hit or a double, whatever it may be. Now she's going to try to get a little depth. And you watch the difference as she's going to go out toward the outfield a little bit, which allows her to make that good turn at third base. The other thing is fly ball situation. Obviously, you have a couple of responsibilities. Number one, if you have a ground ball hit in front of you, and you're at second base, then you've got to get back. The only time that she can go from second base to third on the ground ball is if she can get beyond the ground ball or if the ground ball's hit to the right side of the infield. Same thing for fly balls. If you look at fly ball situation here, if the ball's hit to left field or to center field, obviously Amanda can't tag and go to third on that, so she would get off and get as close to home as she can and be able to get back safely. But if she sees that right fielder turn her back and go toward the fence and right field, that might be a good ball that she can tag on. And the one thing that I want to urge is when you tag, you always want to be looking at the play. So if Amanda, go ahead and lead off. you got a fly ball to right field. Let me see you come back. Now tag. You notice that she's opened up looking, and then she can go from there. Second base can be fun and exciting because you are now in scoring position. So it's very important that you understand the proper mechanics of taking a good lead, either a one-way lead where you're going directly to third 
or getting some depth so that you can score in that single. Good ball players work very hard at their base running. And this is where it begins right here because this is a run and that's what the game's all about. In this segment, we're gonna talk about leads at third base. Now we're 60 feet from home plate. We've, we're 60 feet from scoring a run, which is our ultimate goal. So your leads at third base become very important. The one thing that we want to try to stress to you is that your leads have to be aggressive. You have to have good anticipation, but you also have to be able to get back safely because this is a really easy place for you to get picked off of if you're not smart. Now, one common thing about leads, if you uh, grown up as a baseball player, you're always taught to lead off in foul territory in case the ball hits you, but you are always told to come back in fair territory. Well, in softball, it's complete opposite. We want to lead off in foul territory so that if the ball hits us, it's a foul ball, but we want to come back in foul territory. And the reason being in softball, the positioning of the third baseman. In baseball, the third baseman plays behind the bag. Well, in softball, the third baseman plays in front of the bag, so if Taraya would lead off in foul territory and come back in fair territory, she's coming right back into my tag position. So it's important that you understand why we lead off in foul and we get back in foul. The other thing is when you get up, get back in foul territory, you want to work the outside part of the bag so that you can get away from any type of tag play. The basic lead at third base is a controlled lead. If you watch Taraya when she does this, she's going to get off and then she's going to try to be in a position where she is able to make a reaction when the ball gets in the strike zone. If she gets into that position and the ball is down off the bat going on the ground, she can continue to run and score. But if the ball gets by the hitter, she's got to be able to get her shoulders turned toward the infield so that she can plant and get back. One of the most common mistakes at third base is base runners that don't get squared back up to the infield and all of a sudden the catcher looks and their shoulders are square at them. This is the perfect sign to pick this runner off because there's no way that I can turn and get back to third. So it's really important that she takes her lead, nice controlled lead, three steps, she's landing on her right foot as that ball hits the strike zone and now she opens up and she can get back to the bag safely. Now, in fly ball situation, it's a little bit easier at third base because now we can tag on just about any fly ball that is hit to the outfield. On a ball hit to right field, center field, or left field, she's going to get off and she's going to come back and tag so that she's opened up, she can see when the outfielder catches the ball, and then she can commit to home plate. The only time she would change that is if the ball is in foul territory. So if the ball happens to be in foul territory down the left field line, now Taraya is going to come back, she's going to open up so that she can see the catch, and then now when she runs, she wants to run in the foul territory part of the baseline. If the left fielder catches a ball right on the line and she tags, we want her to run on the inside of the baseline to maybe draw some interference with that throw. So again, you don't have to be a quick base runner. If you're a smart base runner, you can help your team.